Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm excited to bring you a conversation with Splash of Pain. Splash of Pain, alongside Captain Crumbs, run a Discord community server called the Poolside. And a while ago, Crumbs invited me onto their server, and I've had a spot there since. Splash does streaming and also makes other kinds of content. And today, we're going to be hearing about Splash's story. Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today, I'm excited to be talking with Splash. Hello there. Hi. So just for some context for the listeners, Splash is the owner of the Discord server that I have a spot on. Yeah. I had started off like I was planning I needed to uh, collect um, the community, really. And then I realized that Crumbs and I, we pretty much had the same community, so we could all have the same community, the same spot. And then he mentioned that you didn't have a place to do your things. And I thought, well, why not add another one? The more the merrier, right? <laughs> yeah and it's 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 been really cool seeing how players like i'll bring some people and then they talk in the other server mm -hmm. and it's like uh having this experience has shown me that like you're better off with a discord server that is a couple other people as a community server i agree it just like it, it really adds something to it, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad about that. It's also been so, lots of fun to see everything you've been up to on your server. Like, I, I read everything, even though I don't, don't comment all the time, but I'm there. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to read. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's surprising sometimes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'd like to learn more about, kind of before, before all this, mm -hmm. Because um, you make you make YouTube content and you stream, mm -hmm. and I've I've seen these things as well. But I want to learn more about like the beginning before that happened. What was the lead up to like you 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 weren't playing Valheim? You started playing Valheim, then you started doing community stuff. Because I can tell you really like you value the community. Oh, yeah, you yeah. planned things. Like you put things in position for this to occur. It's not like it was an accident. At least I don't get that vibe. You seem to really understand that. Oh yeah. Um... I got, uh, let's go from the beginning then, let's start with Volheim. Um, it was a couple of friends of mine, they found this game, it was pretty new, they were talking about it and they said, oh, you should try this, it's fun, it's early access, been out for a week or so, lots of fun, you should really try it. And I looked at them playing it, watched them for a while and said, hmm, more for crumbs, I think, he should try it first. So I told him to try it out and... Then he said, you know what, I know you well enough, you are going to like this game, so maybe we should try to play this together. So we started playing it together, and that's how we noticed that it was a lot of fun. So we've been playing it together for a while. And then we moved to Spain, and from Sweden. We are from Sweden originally, both Crumbs and I. And uh, when we moved to Spain, we had to start dealing with paperwork, the first thing. And I get really restless if I don't have anything to do that kind of feels like it has a, pur no, a purpose. So that's when I kind of started the channel. So Crumbs and I said, OK, just to have something to do in the days while we wait for documentation and all the things to get sorted, let's do this and see what happens. So we started recording some Valheim content and learned more about editing and learned more about sound. And then we learned more about um, sp yeah, all kinds of stuff. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a great journey. And the recent thing we started to learn about was streaming, really. So, uh, but, but I must say, I've enjoyed every single bit of it. So that's maybe the gist of it, I think. That's really cool. Uh -huh. I, I, I always like it when people get into Valheim together with someone they, they care about or are already close to. Uh -huh. It just sounds like, to me, from like a game development perspective, that's like the dream, to make games that people can get into together. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know why I love that notion so much. I, but. I, agree that, I agree with you on that one, because, I mean, a lot of games, adventure games in particular, are really fun, but in the end... Those where you can play with your friends like Minecraft and others are the ones you stay in because that is where you gather those really great memories. Yeah. Yeah, so what why do you think that is exactly? Why why do games like that seem to 
but you said games that we stay in. So what? Yeah. What is it? What games do we stay in, and and why? If you don't mind. Um, to me. It's always about the stories, and I think that's kind of the human nature. We're the the thing that difference makes us different from other animals are storytelling and crafting with our hands. So I'm thinking storytelling is the main reason why why we stay in different games because we like the story or the story we are telling or the story we're experiencing. And、um, in Minecraft, if you play it alone, it's a lot of building. Sure, it's a lot of fun. Alone. Same with Volheim. It's a lot of fun on your own, but it's the shenanigans and the、uh, interactions that you get when you have other people around that makes a whole difference. Because that's when the real stories come to life. You know, that's what I'm thinking at least.、Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It, it definitely seems like something. There's something about that interaction with others that just makes the experience. Potentially lasts so much longer. Yeah, I agree. Like without those people interacting, it's just yeah. It, it's like a, a maybe thirty hour experience, forty hour experience. But then it's it has to be a really good game、mm-hmm. to p- keep people occupied for hundreds of hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if it's multiplayer, oh, it could be tens of thousands of hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just completely changes it, right? Uh huh. We have a guy on our server who's been playing.、Uh, he's up at twelve thousand hours or something in just Volheim. And、I've, that's so cool. That is in, in, insane because I think I've been playing this game a lot, and I'm ten thousand hours behind him. <laughs> I think that's about how I am as well. But I leave like the title screen on and stuff,、uh-huh. so I'm pretty sure it's actually like just a, like one or two thousand or something. <laughs> I, I, I don't really know. I don't keep track of that. Yeah. But but I'm wondering about that player. How, so what? what What's he like? Like, what does he do? Oh, he's kind of a speed runner and a builder in all in one. So he either speed runs and then he finds a really nice spot where he wants to build, and then he stays there and builds for hours. So, so it's <laughs> it's a really fun combination. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess if you play the game that much, it makes sense that you've had enough time to do more than just. Because it's like some people, they it's almost like they need to identify as just a builder、mm-hmm. or just a fighter.、Mm-hmm. But then there's other people who do building, fighting, and organizing and everything.、Mm-hmm. You know,、yeah. it's like funny how how the different mentalities. Are. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I want I want to ask you about、um, you were playing Valheim and you talked about what you like about Valheim, but you also mentioned recording and streaming and learning a lot about that process. Yeah. So can you can you talk about what that felt like? Like what was it like? Making videos, putting yourself out there. What what was that process like? Oh yeah.、Um, the first videos we put out was Crumbs and I. We realized afterwards are pretty bad, but you know, it was a lot of fun. And I I actually I went overboard with a lot of things because I sat there and two D animated an intro that I hardly ever use, and so on and so forth for the first. Episodes, and then I used them just for the playthrough in Valheim, and never again because really intros are not used anymore in that that way because that's what I've heard people are finding them. L- yeah, it's sort of an OG thing. Yeah, tedious. So、uh, that was kind of pointless, but lots of fun. And then you start editing and thinking, hmm. Maybe I should have cut and out,、uh, removed even more stuff from here because people don't want to watch me plant two thousand tomatoes. I was about to say, but <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> so、uh, you learn a lot along the way there with、um, about the content wise at least. And then as you go, you think, oh, I would like to add that, and I would like to be able to do that. And then you Google how to do that, and then you so you always learn something new. And the more you learn. The more fun editing, the editing part gets. That's in my opinion, at least, because I really enjoy editing. Yeah, it's, does it? So, do you ever feel like you're playing Valheim when you edit a Valheim video? Yeah, kind of. You know, you are playing the game and then you、uh, you replay it, but you are moving around things. So it's kind of like、um, you're playing it the way you wanted to play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly.、Well, I, I've noticed that, like. That happens to me. I, I'll record or something,、uh-huh. and then I'll feel like I'm playing, but I'm actually just editing footage. But I guess because you're looking, your brain, my brain just sees Valheim, right? Because、uh-huh. it's not like I'm 
I, I mean, I'm looking at the other things, but there's always a preview of the image and I'm thinking about what I was showing. Mm -hmm. So, so it's like a, a different way to play. Yeah. And I, I'm wondering, so, so how do you find that recording itself, not, let, let's not talk about the editing for this, uh, for the sake of yeah, this sentence yeah. here. How did that change your experience of playing? Like, what do you think the difference is between playing Valheim for you and playing Valheim with the intention to record something? Um, I, stream, I, I am a total loot goblin and I will have to uh, keep that in the back burner a bit because otherwise I'd spend hours just running around looting things all the time. That is the main difference between my usual play style and recording, really. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> Other than that... Um, there's not much of a difference, I think. I guess I meant more about how you feel when you're playing, not so much what you do differently okay, okay, okay. when you play. Uh, it's the same, pretty much. Uh, the first times it felt weird, but... Now it's not so much. Now it's been... I, I have been recording more gameplay than I have been playing games without recording the last year. So it doesn't feel weird anymore at all, but it did in the beginning. It certainly seems to for a lot of people. I've, I've noticed they they need to spend some time kind of putting themselves out there so they can get comfortable. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But once they're comfortable... Then you know they can they can work well with others. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that is the truth. That really is the truth. You have to get used to it. So I'm I'm wondering, do you ever? So when when I edit the videos, basically, mm -hmm. I remove two thirds of the stuff I say. Mm -hmm. So so like I, it, like let's say I record for thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. It'll be a 10 minute video Yep. most of the time. So, so I cut out a lot of stuff, but what's really useful, uh -huh. and I'll just share this with you. Have you ever used um, like silence detection when you're recording? No, what is that? So you can basically record in a way where you have the program, the video editor automatically cut everything up for you. Oh. So if you learn to basically make a statement and then pause for just just like that, just a tiny little gap, mm -hmm. then basically anytime you mess up, mm -hmm. you just stop and then you just repeat it and you don't have to stop recording or do anything else. And even if you have to do it three or four times yeah. or let's say the recording, you, you have to go do something in real life or whatever. You don't even need to stop recording. You just get up, go do something else for 10, 20 minutes or however long, mm -hmm. come back and finish it. And because your voice can basically uh, identify the parts you want. Okay. You can then use silence removal on the file to like pre-cut everything up for you. Oh. So that you don't have to do any of that. That's convenient. And it's, like the difference between recording that way mm -hmm. and r trying to keep track of everything for me personally was huge. It really helped me make content faster oh, yeah. because I used to spend a lot of time kind of cutting mm -hmm. up things and, and adjusting them. Whereas if you use, and I think a lot of video editors have them. It's not like a thing unique to one video editor. I use like a $80 lifetime license of Filmora I got like five years ago. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's not like expensive. Nice. I mean, it was just a one-time payment of that. And uh, I don't know if they do that anymore, but but the point's just, I, I just wanted to share that because it's really... That's uh, neat. If you're making... If you're making a video about gameplay, for example, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of time it's really stressful to just keep talking. Yeah. And when we do, like we have to do that for streams and stuff, mm. but we often get a bit distracted, right? Yeah. So by using the silence detection, you can literally just stop talking, take a 30 second break to, to get your train of thought mm -hmm. and then keep going. And then when you start editing, that silence isn't there. No. Oh. So it's like it didn't happen. And it's like... It, it, it's so fluid and quick, and I really, really encourage anybody interested in editing, especially if you're doing gameplay footage, yeah. you can literally just play for like two hours, but only talk when something interesting is happening. Oh, nice. And then the result uh -huh. is you get to start editing the file, mm -hmm. but it's back-to-back -back clips of the interesting moments from that two-hour session. So oh. instead of you looking through the whole mm -hmm. session, 
you start from the very beginning with like 30 minutes of stuff to edit instead of two hours. Oh, that's nice. So it's super useful. Very. Exactly. Very useful. Yeah. Um, that makes me think back to the last video I edited, um, the Naked and Afraid one. That was 27 hours of footage cut down to 30 minutes. Uh, well, that would have been convenient. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot. Yep. I don't think I could even hold 27 hours of footage on my computer, <laughs> to be honest. I, so do you ever feel like you get burned out because you started editing something and it's taking a lot work, a lot more work than you expected, or it's going, it's going to? Um... Sometimes you get burned out on a, a certain thing because it takes longer, but I'm too stubborn for that, so I usually just force myself through it if it's getting to that point. That's impressive. Uh, so maybe if I look back at it afterwards, I don't like that clip very much, but it's there. And it's probably just me noticing that it isn't as good as it could have been. That's really awesome that you're able to do that, though, because a lot of people... They, I've, I've seen that they really, really struggle. Uh -huh. It's like they're very unwilling to do something and it not be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the problem is in order to get to the point where you can do things that others perceive as perfectly, mm -hmm. you have to have done it hundreds of thousands of times. So, yeah. it, 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 you know, it sort of stops one from doing things properly. Yeah. So it's ironic. I decided to look at this channel as a job. So I've been doing it like uh, 10 hours a day and having deadlines all the time for videos so that's why I had to just make sure it was done until that date and that's how I've been doing it all the way so maybe I'm not very proud of some of the clips but at least it's there no I, they have to be made so you learn and yeah like that we we have all these judgments about ourselves and others and insecurities mm. that get in the way of us learning. But really, you have to make stuff and put yourself out there. And if through doing that, you will learn. Through making something bad, you learn how to make something good. Exactly. Yeah. So there's it, literally doing the the good stuff. But now I see I understand the context because you, you probably always live stream or record if you're making Valheim content. That yes, right? that's pretty much right. Yes, or if okay. I'm not doing there that, I'm building on the longhouse for footage later or uh, some something like it. So I'm pretty much recording or doing something that's going to be recorded sooner or later, constantly. So would you say that recording something knowing that you're recording or preparing something to record would you say that that gives valheim a similar feeling to playing valheim with someone else um if i would play it with friends i would be much more relaxed i think just hanging out and chilling out not being so um making sure that everything looks perfect or anything like that. I mean, you know how it is. When you start building your first base in your playthrough, you never get it finished. You just sit there with the roof and the workbench, and then then all of a sudden you're yeah. in Ashlands. <laughs> um, so that's usually how you end up playing the game. But for the sake of recording, um, the building part gets more importance, in my opinion, at least. Um, it's fun building in the game, but you don't do it as much when you're just playing for the sake of playing the game. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. Because it's sort of like, well, at least I, like when I played individually, mm -hmm. I, I could get motivated to build something. Mm. But uh, it was very easy, kind of like I mentioned with the video editing, mm -hmm. to try and start something and then realize like it's too big mm -hmm. and it, it like doesn't really matter that much and you go somewhere else. And it was very easy to start projects yeah. and then not finish them. Yeah. But then af once the server started mm -hmm. and the buildings were like so that there's a communal place in that area that people can stop by, uh -huh. suddenly it, it was much more motivating because it felt Understandable, more yeah practical like oh, I'm, I'm making something that it's not just to look at it's like to actually be useful for people mm -hmm. but then there's often the reality that like you think something will be useful and basically it's not <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. So that's always tricky. Yeah, yeah, but that is a difference because then you're doing it with a community and um, it's becoming larger than itself, kind of. Yeah, exactly. So, let's see, I'm trying to think, what, what have we covered so far? We talked about Valheim and recording, editing. I guess, so, this seems like a good opportunity to encourage people. Um, is there anything you, you would like to say to people who want or have thought about making Valheim content in some way, whether it's recording a video or doing a live stream, but they just haven't done it for whatever reason, like they feel like they're not good enough or they just haven't gotten around to it or they forgot or, or whatever. What are your thoughts on that? What do, you, what do you think they should do? I think they should start with streaming and doing that with friends because then you have a natural dialogue and you have, you're learning to talk constantly even though you're not really um, talking to someone. You're talking to everyone. And that is a good way to go with the whole thing. I think, I think it was... When the Shield Maiden who told me that, that she said that the best way to start streaming is to do it with friends. And I would say that start streaming is the best way to start. And then when you've come that far, you have the recording set, you have figured out whole, how all the way about sound and all that. Then you can go to the editing part and, and put out videos. But I think it's a good way to start. That's the easiest way to go. And you don't need several several hours. Uh, editing to get that done, you can just sit down and start and you have several hours of footage and you haven't had all the hours in the background that you don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, that makes a lot of sense to me because one of the things people struggle with is filling the silence. Mm -hmm. I, I call it narrating, like there's the, you learn to have this switch basically. Yeah. And you turn the switch on, and then everyone in your life hates you because you're constantly explaining everything to them, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. So you learn you learn these 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 skills that are great in video, uh -huh. but can be a little bit frustrating for, for other oh, people. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. that skill. That's something that takes a lot of time to develop. Like in my case, um, I've published like 1,800 YouTube videos on huge varieties of different subjects. Mm -hmm. and I've made a bunch of courses for other people yeah. and all sorts of stuff. So I've gotten very comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. But that, I was super awkward as a kid, incredibly introverted. I, I was not a person <laughs> with friends and any of that. And apparently that is the YouTuber recipe. We, we seem like we're really charismatic on our channel. <laughs> but now that I've met multiple YouTubers and talk to them, the norm is to seem charismatic in your channel, but actually in your personal life, be super introverted. You know what? I've been calling that, I put it on my work face all my life. I say, I put on my work face <laughs> before I go to school or before, you know, I worked as a teacher for several years. So I've been standing on, on, you know, like uh, <laughs> in front of everybody talking every day, constantly. So yeah, the work face. <laughs> And that, so that skill, that narration, I, I see how when people start, uh -huh. really the most important thing is getting over the fact that you're putting yourself out there and you may be criticized or whatever. Uh -huh. Once you have put yourself out there, mm -hmm. it gets easier the more you do it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can see how that they'll start and they won't necessarily have that ability to fill the silence with narration. But if they have a friend who they're playing with, mm -hmm then they don't have to fill that silence with narration. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that, yeah, I, I, I think that's a great recommendation. So, yeah, so that's how it comes and I decided to start as well because we thought, both of us, that yeah, we're both a bit of introverts. Maybe uh, if we play together and record it, we, I mean, we know each other very well. We've been married for quite some time, so um, <laughs> it's usually just... Um, the way we are and uh, then you can make something out of it it's easier when you're two so i i want to ask you about that mm -hmm. in valheim yeah i i've noticed i i don't know if this is something unique to valheim maybe, maybe you can tell me if you've noticed this or not uh -huh. but basically compared to a lot of the other communities i play in uh -huh. valheim seems to have a lot of like couples who both like 
the same game. Yeah. Like I, I've, I've met multiple people in that scenario. But when I look at like my days in World of Warcraft, for example, uh -huh. there were way more relationships broken up by that game <laughs> than being played together, at least that I knew of. Yeah. Whereas with Valheim, it really, it does seem like a game that like, Couples play together. Yeah, people in your. I'm not place. saying it, uh, more couples than single people or something, but it it seems to enable that. Yeah, I and think that so is too. So cool. I think it's really great. Yeah, I agree. And I now that that you mentioned it, I don't think I can remember any other game that really has that. That's kind of cool. Well, so why why do you think that is? I have no idea. <laughs> that is really interesting. Oh man! Oh, is it because the um, people playing the game are maybe in that age that they have partners and children? Maybe or yeah, maybe that's a good point because the Valheim player base is old. Yeah, like compared—I mean, compared to other games, it's one of the oldest player bases yeah. in a game that I know of. Yeah, same. Maybe that's why. Yeah, it's it's always hard to tell. Like, if something is like, it's easy to be like, oh, it's because it's such a cooperative experience in these things. Uh -huh. But then at the end of the day, maybe it's just because the regions that it's popular in are more culturally like that and more communal and stuff. You never, you know, it, it's uh, it's always hard to tell where things actually come from. Oh yeah, true. And like, if you look at if you look at the demographics for Valheim, mm -hmm. let's say on like Google Trends or something, mm -hmm. one thing that's always interesting to me is that it isn't popular in the Americas, like really isn't isn't popular. And if you look at like the global map, uh -huh. it's literally most played where there were cultural Vikings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is like, it's that sounds so logical to me. It's a game about Vikings uh -huh. and people who are from those cultures play it more. I mean, that makes too much sense. I was surprised. <laughs> that is kind of funny, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's pretty noticeable. Like if you look at Google Trends, it's like fin uh, Finland, Denmark, Sweden, oh. Norway. These are the countries that have the most people interested in Valheim. Oh. And then if you look at the U.S., mm -hmm. it's like 50 percentage compared to just Sweden. Okay. Even though the U.S. is bigger. Yeah. Huh. So it really, like, it really isn't a popular game in the Americas. And I, like, I had no idea about that. No, neither did I. It kind of explains how most of the people that I know are Europeans. They're, they're like, from Russia or from Sweden uh -huh. or Finland or these countries. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. there's some Americans, but... Yeah, I had no idea. I've noticed that there are a lot of American players, but, yeah, that's because it's so huge in comparison to, yeah. Of course, that's yeah, and I'm not saying there aren't American players. I'm just talking about the like when you go to Google Trends and you look mm -hmm. up the demographics mm -hmm. for Valheim, yeah, and where people are searching for it and that kind of thing, yeah. Um, it's heavily, heavily weighted in the Scandinavian region. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is that is interesting. I wonder what other games, uh, what kind of games would be, uh, have more searches in like the United States then, or like um, in Africa Call maybe? Call of Duty. Yeah, Call, it's Call of Duty, yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, like those games literally are used by our, let's call it empire, to recruit people into the <laughs> military. So they're very tied to American culture. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They've got a lot of relationships with the military, mm -hmm. like production and stuff and they're very like in bed with each other mm -hmm. so what are the swedes trying to do with it via volheim making everybody raid someone hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're trying to make the world more peaceful with an incredible awesome cooperative game it teaches people how to share and not fight each other <laughs> Yeah, you, I, I'm assuming at least, because yeah. if you look at PvP content on YouTube about Valheim, it's yeah. an incredibly tiny piece of it. Yeah. Like people are interested, the people who are, but in general, most people don't really care that much about yeah. competing in Valheim. Yeah, I've noticed that too. And cool. uh, Yeah, and also, I mean, this is the nicest community I've ever met in any online-based game whatsoever, where you have, uh, you know, like multiplayer games. The nicest yeah. community. I haven't met, okay, maybe one or two people who could be a bit rude, but it's not like they're 
really bad, like in other games. Yeah, there's not that much like outright toxicity. No, no, exactly. Unless you, I've only seen that when I had like a server that was sort of inviting that. No, oh, okay. I had a listed public server that was. It had like an A in the name, so it would be the first server to show up in the list, mm -hmm. and it had. It was like. Pa a password is PW. Oh, so yeah. literally anybody could join and they didn't need to know anything about the server. And I did find that there were a, a lot of griefers. I was just going to ask you, server. how many griefers did you have? <laughs> yeah, that, that was like a constantly griefed server. Uh -huh. um, but it was also a server that re... It was a sort of like one big dungeon. Mm -hmm. So it would reset and it was all these combat experiences and it would reset every week or something. Mm -hmm. So people, I think, were more prone to griefing because they knew that the server was just going to reset, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was quite shocking because that, that was quite common and I thought that was just normal. But then I ran Palm and Path to Ashlands and mm -hmm. Path to Dernween and these servers. They're all the same server, just different names. For yeah, 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 yeah. And then nothing ever happens. Like, I haven't had to ban anybody. I mean, maybe at some point I will, but... Uh, I, I tend to just kind of let people fight a little bit. And as long as they're not being outright disrespectful, I found that one problematic player will basically cause another problematic player to have an altercation and then they both leave. <laughs> and then everybody who stays is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So it seems to sort of resolve itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so, so could you talk more about why... I guess maybe about the other communities then, because you've said that the Valheim community has been the, let's say, friendliest or most cooperative one that you've participated in. So could you share what what are other communities like in your experience? Oh, or, okay. Could let's you talk see. about that? What kind of communities are we? Let's see here what we have. Um, if we go back and look at um, online games like, um, I mean, Elder Scrolls Online is one of the games I played online. And there is a... Maybe that's why you loot everything. Yeah, might be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is a bit of more toxicity there, but it's not a lot. Like, um, um, I don't. I never played World of Warcraft because I, th I was uh, studying at uni back then and I didn't think I would manage to stay away from the game because it felt a bit too um, addictive. But I'm <laughs> yeah. hearing that... Maybe a good decision. Yeah. Well, I'm certainly a hell of a lot healthier than <laughs> World War Yeah. Is. From what I've heard and seen is that people can be pretty toxic over World of Warcraft still. Even though it's an old game and mostly um, old players there still, I think. Yeah, it sort of, it sort of became that way over time. Uh-huh. It didn't used to be, but because it, it seems that any time... Basically, the more competition there is in a game uh -huh. and the more at stake, yeah. then the more toxic the scene is. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems to I mean, be and pretty simple. I used to play Fortnite before it was cool, so that I left when it got toxic too. Um, so, um, I mean, I didn't play that for very long at all, actually, before it got toxic. And so how do you feel that Fortnite... I, I've actually never played Fortnite. I've studied it because obviously it's <laughs> incredibly popular. But I've, I've never been in that, that interested in it personally. Oh, uh, yeah. But what, what, do you th what do you say chain changed? Because you said it didn't feel as toxic and then it did. So what, what happened there? What makes you say that? Uh, they changed demographic completely. I mean, there were a bunch of people in my age playing it and we were having fun. And uh, then people noticed this, I guess, and started joining in, and the whole playing field changed. I'm not sure if it's because younger people joined and didn't think of that. Uh, the way they behaved would make a difference because it was the internet and not for real or whatever. That's what I'm thinking. Um, but... In my opinion, that's what changed Fortnite, at least. But it also, I mean, you have uh, large streamers that made it very popular among younger people, and I guess that's a reason as well. It seems the masses ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that was the problem there, in my opinion, at least. We had fun when we played it, and we were small groups. And then it wasn't fun anymore. <laughs> so I'm wondering, 
Uh, something I noticed in World of Warcraft, um, basically back in the day when it was less toxic and mm -hmm. like people didn't know everything, there was way less min-maxing, there was mm -hmm. more just innocently enjoying a game mm -hmm. instead of trying to beat the game that you don't get paid to play. I don't understand their mentality, but the, the point is it used to be more innocent and people seemed to play to have fun. Yeah. And one thing that was made a huge difference was the anonymity factor. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, you had a reputation because your server was small yeah. and you couldn't just transfer to another server. And if you pissed off the healers or you pissed off the people who make the bags and the tailors, like yeah. they wouldn't work with you. <laughs> so like you, you could join a group mm -hmm. and then somebody would see that player join and leave because they hate them and there there's like a consequence oh that yeah makes that is a huge and that makes a huge difference yeah. that they removed it at some point uh -huh. in world of warcraft so they made it so instead of having a group on your same server that's limited where you're going to see the same people again uh -huh. you just click a button and it's a different group of people every single time oh. you will rarely ever see the same person yeah well then and you that i think is probably the most, the biggest contributor to toxicity you can. Yeah. The anonymity factor will Definitely. always, it's like, if you have anonymity, mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's, it's bad. And I don't even mean like the players, I'm not talking about their real life identity. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that they can do things in the game with impunity and no consequences. Yeah. Then it's going to get really toxic. Yeah. It seems to be like they need that that feedback loop and those consequences. And as developers tend to listen too much to the players and then take convenient, uh, take inconveniences out and add as many conveniences as possible, mm -hmm. but it ends up producing that, that circumstance. And that seems to be what happened with WoW. So, so could you tell them a bit more about the Longest Longhouse? Oh, okay, the Whaleheim server, we started that because uh, Ashlyn was about to come out and we wanted to make sure we could build a longhouse as long as it could go. And we were pretty much inspired by your bridge to Ashlyn's to begin with. Uh, so we thought that it would be fun to make a house that long and it would be fun to have it built in so many different styles that we possibly could because then you would see that many people had been involved into it. So, Yeah, and you could just walk down it and then yeah. basically get building inspiration. Or it, uh -huh. I think that's really cool. So what we have so far is 10% of the map done. And it looks like a lot when you run through it, but it isn't when you look at the map. And um, we have areas where there are lots of instances making it really hard to go through there without having problems for if you have um, a, a smaller computer it will be really tough if you have yeah yeah so 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 some parts are really hard and then since we're also people from all over the place it could be hard for that reason sometimes so we have had to add um, better networking mods for it to make it work, so we will have to play with mods too. Kind of. Ah, there's so, so, just so you know, have you noticed how when certain players, let's say they're really far away, mm -hmm. um, when that particular player comes, it'll make it noticeably more laggy compared to if another player? Yes, if, if, the, if, if they come in first, definitely. Yeah. Uh huh. So you can completely mitigate that mm -hmm. if the players use VPNs. Yeah. Because what a lot of people don't realize about the way Valheim networking works mm -hmm. is people like share all of their lag with all the players nearby and then it gets added mm -hmm. to each player. Yeah. So it's not like a game like World of Warcraft where you're just connecting to the server. Mm -hmm. It's more like you're connecting to a group that's all sharing the lag. So. So when they use VPNs, mm. they're making it so the part of their latency that gets shared yeah. is just the distance between the VPN mm -hmm. and the server. Yeah. Whereas if they don't use a VPN, they're sharing the distance from where they are in the server. Yeah. And so I just say that because to you and to anyone listening, um, I've had to 
do a lot of stuff to manage lag on on these servers yeah, especially yeah, yeah. in the beginning when there were more players and stuff oh yeah and by far the thing that made the biggest difference on is VPN. if people are using vpns mm -hmm. like really it makes a huge difference the only thing that's comparable to that is if crossplay is enabled yeah i i love the idea of crossplay but it is yeah game breakingly laggy it's very laggy practice, which very is really laggy. unfortunate yeah isn't it um i think if you've um if you ever found an interest in minecraft um there is this server called hermitcraft they use there are lots of players that are using vpn to make it work because the server is in britain and i they really had to do that because otherwise it wouldn't function as it should lag and all kinds of stuff that was the only yeah. way to solve it and they've been going on for years now with their server yeah for some reason people are i, I guess because it's yeah, people. Most people don't just have a VPN, right? So it's something they would have to use, mm. or because people seem quite hesitant to do it. But mm -hmm. I guess th I, I already have one and use it for other things. So it's just pressing a button, right? Yeah. But if someone doesn't already pay for a VPN or have one for some other reason, mm. then it makes sense. Because why are they gonna like? They already paid for Valheim and there's no monthly fees. Yeah. Why are they gonna pay like some monthly thing for a VPN, you know what I mean? So I, I think that's probably why people are so hesitant. But I always find it a bit amusing because I'm like, people will tell me they have problems. And I know it's like, because they haven't done all the steps I told them. Yeah. And there's they always do like one of them and they just don't want to do these other ones. Uh, but then they talk about having like game breaking issues. And I'm like, look, that happens mm -hmm. when you do this. You need to do that. But people often don't, they, they like, because... In their head, a VPN reduces your network speed, so it's impossible for it to help your lag yeah. in their in their head. But in practice, that's not actually true because you're not your lag isn't just correlated to your network speed in Valheim. That's not how it works. No. So it's like irrelevant, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah, but that is very useful to know. So I mean, uh, we were talking about that when we started the server, and we noticed all the lag. We tried to figure out how to deal with it and since very few were using vpns we decided okay let's let's add better networking then and see how it works because it hasn't been updated for a really long time but it, yeah that, that always trips people out yeah but, for me better networking helps with rubber banding yeah that's the thing there's two noticeable things that it does mm -hmm. the first is that when you first load the game mm -hmm. the stuff around you shows up much faster mm -hmm. definitely Sometimes if you set the settings right and you have good internet, it can literally be immediate. Mm. So instead of having to watch the world like load around you, you just join. Yeah. It does that. And also um, the rubber banding issue with multiple players, mm. that I don't experience as much with better networking. It seems to really help with that specific mm. problem. Yeah. I'm not saying people don't have lag because they, they still get lag. Mm. Um, but... But it's actually I was I was quite surprised that the Ashlands combat didn't seem that bad. It was very weird to me because on the server, um, when when Path to Ashlands launched, yeah. there was this town area in the meadows, and when there were like five or six players there, it was unplayable. Like we yeah. couldn't function. You would try and like open a cart, and nothing happened. Yeah, we had the same issue. Uh, and for like 30 seconds yeah, it was or a horrible. minute or whatever, you know? And it's like, you literally have to leave the chunk. Yeah, yeah. And then go somewhere else. And then it just, boom, everything's fine. Yeah, it was horrible. Right? It was horrible. So I was expecting Ashlands to be like that. But then for some reason, it just wasn't. Like even, it, I guess because there weren't that many players in the Ashlands. Mm. But uh, even when there were like three or four people, they were actually able to do the combat, which confused me because I'm used to thinking that in Valheim, if there's more than two players, you can't do melee. Yeah. Like that's how I play basically. Cause I'm used to the lag and stuff. I'm but having then, a hard so time with some kinds, sometimes the melee. Yeah. Very, very tough when you're playing on the server with, with other players because it's hard to time stuff. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And the animations mm. don't line up and mm -hmm. you don't see the attack animation yeah, yeah, yeah. and the attack just lands on you. You know, you mm. have to, you have to really space people out and everything mm. or space the enemies out. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, we had a real issue with Ashlands to begin with. Uh, and we had the same lag all over the place, even though we weren't in Ashlands even. But uh, then we got, uh, 
with the later with the update that come later has been better. Uh, the um, patch they added afterwards, so that made a huge difference. But still, Ashlyn has been a bit of a lag fest sometimes. <laughs> Not all the time, but yeah. sometimes. I mean, it, it certainly is on on Palm. Like maybe, well, I guess maybe one of the reasons it worked is because of that experience in the town. Uh -huh. I redid the town on Path of Magic. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can go into the Ashlands, and then there's this this path. You have to survive going on the path, which is not always easy because there's a bunch of challenging enemies, let's say. Yeah. But so once you get there, you get to this citadel area, mm -hmm. and I realized that the the first town, the problem was that the town was made in a way where you could engage in combat on the edge of the town and you were still in the loading zone of the town, so it was super laggy. Yeah. So basically I accepted that the town, the Citadel and the Ashlands is going to be super laggy. Mm -hmm. And instead of um, trying to stop the lag, I tried to stop the fighting yeah. near the lag. Yeah. Because that, that seemed to work much better. So basically I made this... There's this building zone, and then there's this buffer area that's like 20 or 30 meters perimeter outside of that building zone, and it's completely blank. There's like nothing there. Um, so enemies are sort of blocked off. There's like this little wall, yeah. basically, so enemies can't come into that space. And then that seems to have worked really well because it basically made it so people are lagging in the Ashlands, mm -hmm but they're building and it doesn't really matter as much when people are building. Lag is like more manageable. Um, as long as you're able to interact with chests and do that sort of thing, then it, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're fighting, oh, lag is horrible. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. Yeah. So, so that seems to have helped a lot because that way the builders build in that area. And then when you fight, because of all the spacing, mm -hmm. you only fight far away from that area. Yeah. So maybe that was why we didn't have as many problems mm. because i did a lot of preventative stuff like that whereas yeah, yeah, yeah. before just threw people in and <laughs> like if you if you don't manage the players oh, it's, it's rough <laughs> definitely like, especially on the no portal server because they just uh they all build next to each other because it's safer yeah 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 and they just like like it's cool seeing them build a town and but how then quickly have, they can do it yeah but then you have sixteen thousand instances within two minutes yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's, it, it gets really hard to manage. Uh -huh. that, that would be, honestly, if, if there was a way for Valheim to have a town that wasn't laggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that would be awesome. People definitely, uh, like if you, if you listen to people, mm -hmm. the lag and issues are one of the biggest problems I hear. Yeah, that's what Valheim. I'm hearing too. And uh, I mean... That is the uh, whole networking situation still, but by, um, I mean, as we said, both you and I, uh, it's fun to play this game, but it's more fun to play together with others, and then networking becomes a really important part. So yeah. it has to be dealt with at some point, but I mean, it's still in progress, this game. It's, um, it's Yeah, I, I have a feeling it'll, it'll not be, because it looks like, I love Iron Gate. I'm not criticizing. No, them. no, I'm, neither I'm am just I. Neither making am I. an observation. Yeah. Basically, Valheim isn't. They didn't intend for Valheim to be like an MMO or like a, a constantly. They the server part of Valheim mm -hmm. is there. It's not developed for that. No, no, no. So in my head, if they ever made like a Valheim two, mm -hmm. then in that situation, I, I'm not saying they would. I don't think they will. Mm -hmm. But if they would, I could see them from the beginning. Mm -hmm starting with the mentality of like the networking yeah. and the server making yeah. to to fundamentally make it as smooth as possible yeah but because that is something I i've been asked several times happening. i've been asked several times oh so there's an official server somewhere where we can play no sadly we only have room for like two people right now sorry <laughs> yeah yeah and it is it is like you, there's a lot of different ways that show that Valheim is designed like a tabletop game. Yeah. You're meant to have a group of friends who you already know, mm. and you want to do a Valheim playthrough for a month or two with them. That mm -hmm. is the exact specific case that they designed for. So in that case, it functions very well. 
But the moment you're trying to keep a server active,、mm. you have to redo a lot of things because the game is designed in a way that makes people stop playing it. All right, Splash. So I think for our interview now, I'll, I'll finish up. Uh huh. So is there anything you want to tell people?、Um, maybe like where can they follow you if they want to learn more about what you're doing? Um, whatever comes. All right.、Um, we have our Discord,、uh, where you also have YAP, so you can find us both over there. And we are a whole community there of Volheim players. So if there's not room in either of our servers, there are people all over that place that has servers around us, and we also have a channel where people ask where they can go and play with other people. So. Hang on, over, come on over there and hang out there. That's usually where we'll find both of us or all of us. Awesome. So if you want to do that,、uh, you can just look. Who, those of you watching, you can look in the description, and you'll get a link to the Poolside Discord server. Yeah. And so you'll be able to see Splash's community, Crumb's community, and also my community. Yeah. And the the Path of Magic server is it's pretty much always open for people to play on,、mm -hmm. um, but it's not vanilla Valheim, right? It's a modified experience. It's no map, no portals. When I say modded, it is vanilla in the sense that you can join it without any mods, but it's not what you're used to. It's <laughs> it's much more challenging. You'll die a lot more. So it's not for everybody. Like I, I really understand.、Uh, if you've、um, already played Valheim and want a completely new experience, just say yes and go there. I, I promise you, it's going to be a great experience. <laughs> Well, you know, there's there's actually quite a few people who this is their first version of Valheim that they're playing. Oh, and that's, that's why,、true. like, I it used to have a reputation as being a bit hardcore because of the no map, no portal thing.、Mm -hmm. But at this point, so many changes have been done to the server.、Mm -hmm. There's so many abilities for the player, and there's a lot of、um, a lot of things that make it like that. The path, all of the Community houses that they can travel to before they find their base spots. Yeah, it, it's really not like a, a try-hard thing. It feels it's really a, about fun. Like yeah, the, 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 the idea is like dying, make dying fun, basically. Yeah, but I, I realize I have like sort of a a branding issue because people will assume if I talk about the no map, no portal thing,、mm -hmm. people basically assume it's a kind of try-hard experience,、uh. but the actual experience isn't. Like that, it's it's actually very geared towards builders. Yeah,、like、that's what I designed for is trying、mm. to figure out how to get the rest of the game and the Ashlands and all these places to be more accessible. Yeah, to the people who only stay in the first couple biomes. Yeah, and really focus on bringing the rest of the game to them more. So I was just clear clarifying that that you don't need to have played Valheim before.、Um, like multiple of the players who really have told me they've loved it. It, it was、mm -hmm. their first Valheim experience. Yeah. So because what I get the feeling I get is that it's more of the adventure game part of it. And I mean, back if you if you played Minecraft, you don't have a map, and the only portal you have, you will have to go through the Nether, which is even worse than the surface. If you want to、yeah. go faster <laughs> to another area, so I mean, it's pretty much like yeah, that. Yeah, it's just like Minecraft. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just like that. So I think I think most people who have played adventure survival games would like that experience, actually. Well, thank you. So <laughs> again, if any of you listening want to check out any of our communities, look at the top link in the description, and you can like this video or any other video about Valheim if you want to see more content like this on YouTube. And for now, thanks for watching. And、uh, oh, one more thing, actually, right at the end of the video, if any of you are interested in being interviewed, just like this, the only requirement is that it's about Valheim. You don't have to have a be a community manager. You don't have to have played a bunch. Nothing. Just be willing to sign up for a call, show up, and talk about Valheim. It can be about anything you want. And if you're interested in that, you can comment below. Or reach out to me, and then I'll send you a link to set up a call, and then I'll record it and post it to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Nice.